That's right, everyone. This is our 2021 Jeep Wrangler 4xE Sahara. And you are not mistaken, you did just see me plugging it in right there. The plug is right here. This is a plug-in hybrid Wrangler from Jeep. It's been out about six months. We ordered it about seven weeks ago and it just arrived and boy, how are we thrilled and excited about this vehicle. Let me just start the overview of what the 4xE Jeep Wrangler is and what 4xE is in general. So what 4xE is to Jeep is their new electric uh, vehicle system. So instead of 4x4, they say 4xE, it's kind of clever. And so what this is, is you plug it in and this particular Jeep can drive about 25 miles before the turbo two liter gas motor kicks in. So this vehicle goes 25 miles and then on its own when the battery's dead, it just fires up the gas engine and you continue to drive it like a normal Jeep Wrangler. Now this model is a Sahara, so it's very generously equipped, 20 inch wheels. It is not the uh, off-road oriented model like the Rubicon that gets slightly less range, uh, is more money. And then there's even the higher Overland trim which comes completely decked out and actually comes with that rear panel would be body colored. Um, everyone seems a little torn on if they like the body color or the black plastic look. I'm right in the middle, doesn't really matter to me, but. So how much was this vehicle? I will start and tell you guys right away. This is a $55,000 vehicle, but, but I'm gonna tell you why at the end of the video, why this is one of the cheapest SUVs you can buy right now. That is not clickbait. I will tell you exactly why, and you will see why it makes sense. Let me just do a little walk around of the video or of the car. This is a Stingray Jeep Wrangler. Um, any color that's not white costs, I believe it's $275. So we obviously went with this gray. I think it pops really well with these blue accents right here. You got the Jeep Trail Rated badge, the Sahara badge, the Jeep. You can tell it's a four by E with the blue. That's a four by E touch. And even the Wrangler Unlimited decal is in blue. Very, very cool. Going around, you do got these 20 inch wheels on these Bridgestone tires. These are just street oriented tires, a lot quieter on the highway than the Rubicon trim. Uh, this vehicle is still quite capable. It is still a Wrangler. I have to tell you a little bit how it works. What Jeep does is there's a battery underneath the back seat. I'll show you guys when I go into the interior and the electric motor is actually sandwiched by a clutch onto the eight speed transmission, which means this is still a Jeep Wrangler. It still has its full normal all wheel drive system. All they do is take a battery put an electric motor into the transmission and it can drive that transmission completely on electric. This still has 30 inches of water fording capability, still has the solid front and rear axles for awesome off-road articulation, still has a four wheel drive low range transfer case. So it is a full on full Jeep Wrangler. It's not an electric car made to look like a Jeep. It's a Jeep made to be an electric vehicle. Uh, coming around to the front. So we're a little torn on this. Since this is the Sahara, you do get silver accents throughout. On the 4xE, you do get LED lights standard. That would make sense. All of these are LEDs. Uh, an electric vehicle, you do want efficient lighting, so that makes sense. You got real recovery hooks here. These are not plastic. This is a plastic bumper. If you go Rubicon, you do get a metal one. And you do have what looks like a skid plate, but that is just plastic. Still does help protect some of the innards if you were to scrape, but it's not a metal one like the Rubicon. So coming around to this side again, uh, you guys can see you got more of that blue. Still looks good. I don't know how I quite feel about this antenna. It looks real old school. I think I kind of like it just because I think it works on a Jeep Wrangler. So going around to just the back, you know, this is just the typical JL Wrangler that was introduced for 2018. Nothing's different about it. It just happens to be electric. Keep that in mind through this video. This is a, a like I said, LED lights throughout. And if you guys watched my other Wrangler video, this one does not have blind spot monitoring, which is kind of a surprise kind of a disappointment in this price range for what this vehicle costs. The sensor would typically be located right here because that's the only way they can make it work with these fenders. But this one does not have it. But if you got it, the blind spot would be monitored right in there. That's why the taillights look how they do. What's really cool about the Wrangler, as always, you get a full size extra rim and tire. It's important to remember some people call these vehicles really expensive. They are, but you do at least get full extra rim and tire. If you do that for any other vehicle, that's a $500 option to go do it on your own aftermarket. And I've talked about this before, the uh, backup camera is located in the middle. They had to do that because where else would it go? You can't put it on the top here, there's no room. The roof comes off, this opens up and you don't want your camera offset. So essentially, this is the place to put it. This is very heavy duty. 
This actually pops off with your tool kit. I'll show you that in a little bit. And uh, if so, if you need to get your tire off, you just pop that off and pull the tire off right over the camera. You have a real recovery hook here. That's not fake. We did up for the tow package. This can tow 3,500 pounds. You have your connectors right here, your three and seven, or uh, seven pin connector right here. Recovery uh, chains. This is a nice place to hold your chains if you were to crisscross and tow them. And it does come with this nice little cap over it that pops off and then it's just your normal uh, trailer hitch. Nothing too fancy. You do have an exposed exhaust outlet. I think that's kind of neat that the Jeep still gives you that. However, that is known to be a crush point if you off-road. Uh, if with the departure angle, that is known to get crushed. That's how you can tell if you really off-road your Jeep. Looking right here, four by E. You could, this is how to, this is the only real way to tell other than the blue decals and from the charge port that it is a four by E. I think this looks very cool with this electric blue. You can see it looks like an outlet right there. Very nice attention to detail. I think it looks very, very awesome. Here, let's go into the back right away while we're back here. Like all Jeep Wranglers, it does tell you your vehicle spe specifications, shows you the length, shows you your water fording capability, 30 inches of water fording at five miles per hour. Very impressive, even though it's electric, you can still do that. It's made in the USA. This is developed in Michigan and built in Toledo, Ohio. This is an American vehicle through and through, designed here, built here, very cool. Jeep since 1941, again, they are celebrating their 80th anniversary this year. All Jeeps have this swing gate design with the dual top. When you get the hard top though, you obviously have the, the, the window and the defrost. You can unconnect them right here. And then there's these bolts right here. This is how you take the back of the roof off. These bolts plus that connection, this whole thing lifts and pulls back. That's a two person job, it is kind of heavy. Back here, you do get a nice storage area. Nice area to keep some extra stuff hidden away and a place to keep your tools. As you can see, they have it labeled. This is where your roof bolts go. If you fold down your front windshield, the windshield does fold down right there. And even says door hinges, everything is marked so you do not lose anything whatsoever. And your tire jack is located under there. That's what that symbol means. So you do still get a full back seat that can fold down. It's just like a normal car. You just grab it right there, push it down. Not too bad. It does give you about 28 cubic feet of space, which is pretty good. You do lose, I believe, three cubic feet of space with the 4xe. Not a big deal. I, for us, it's still plenty. I think most families will find a plenty useful back here. However, these roof bars or roll bars, whatever people call them, everyone calls them something different, do intrude a little bit into the space. It'd be nice if this was pushed all the way in to give you a little more space. You do get a full 12 volt outlet or a cigarette lighter 12 volt back here. It's kind of nice. And then you do have your very nice subwoofer. This car does have the premium sound system. It sounds very, very nice. Uh, that subwoofer is a nice touch, even though it does eat into the cargo space. To close this up, you have to close this first. And then you close this. Let me hop into the back of the Wrangler. So hopping to the back, one of the coolest things is you pull this strap. This is where the battery lives. Uh, some of you might be surprised they can't put it in the vehicle. Jeep says they did that for a couple reasons. For one, you want it in the vehicle for an off-roader like this. If it's under the vehicle, there's always a chance of it getting banged up on rocks. Uh, wouldn't be able to afford through as much water as reliably. Putting it inside makes it easier to keep cool and heat because batteries like to be at about the same temperature people do, around 70 to 80 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. So this makes it nice. If people are worried about safety, uh, I do think it's a little reassuring. Well, the bottom of the seat is lined in metal. So I don't think there should be any really concern with it being in the cabin. I think that's probably the safest place for the battery to be versus outside. I remember Tesla for a couple years had issues with debris under the vehicle shooting up, hitting the bottom and actually piercing their battery. So that doesn't really seem like it's even possible in this vehicle. Let me close that up. Now let me sit in back here and show you guys how it is. So I'm 5'7", sitting behind myself. It's a little tight. I'm not gonna say this is the the best road trip vehicle, but I do have probably four inches. I think you could be 5'10", 5'11", maybe six feet and sit relatively comfortable back here. Um, but it's not the largest SUV on the market. Um, it's a vehicle that right around the midsize category in terms of rear leg room. Um, like at 5'7", I could sit back here all day and be comfortable, but I definitely know some people that would be back here and would not be comfortable. Being the Sahara, we do have climate vents. It's very awesome. 
You got your window controls. You have a full household outlet. That is very nice. And back here, you have four USB, USB-C, nice and future-proofed, and the older USB-A type plugs. Lots of amenities. A couple years ago, this would be unheard of in a Jeep Wrangler, but it, you got everything you could want back here if you're taking a road trip with kids or you're camping and you need to charge up your stuff. Very useful. You do have leather line map pockets on both sides. Again, very useful. Uh, some automakers cut one of these out as a cost-cutting measure. That's not the case here. It is kind of cool. Again, this roof can come off in one piece. Uh, you do have your LED lighting right here. I think this is a very cool design. It's the only roof mounted LEDs in the whole cabin, but each side gets their own uh, because the door is open. It's staying on, but you can turn those on and off. And then of course you have your speakers. Uh, every Jeep Wrangler has these speakers, but this does have the upgraded Alpine system. I think that's very nice. I think it's very cool to have the speakers right behind your head. Uh, even if you don't get the Alpine system, uh, the standard system I've heard is very good just because the speakers are in such close proximity to your head. Sounds pretty good. But this Alpine system does sound phenomenal. Let me walk around. I'll get up to the front and show you guys some of the interior features of this car. Now, something I do want to point out is this does come standard with these steps right here. This is standard. These are not optional. I thought that was very, very nice. Uh, help shorter people get in. Uh, my significant other is vertically challenged, and I think she appreciates those steps very much. Opening up, I just want to talk a little bit about the interior here. Um, this is a Jeep Wrangler, remember. I'm very impressed. This is the Sahara trim. You have this door with some actual leather and some stitching on here. I think this net is really cool. It's simple, gets the job done, looks rugged. Uh, there's no window switches on the doors. Remember, the doors come off very easily, very easily. In fact, all it is is these two hinges right here, which are labeled with what tool you need to use. And then it's just this plug right here. And that's it. This door comes off uh, very, very easily. Uh, so they try to keep as much electronics as possible out of the vehicle. Looking at the seat, this is a Sahara. Man, this looks nice, I think. You got the Sahara embroidery right here on the seat. I think that looks very nice. I wish it was electric blue because it's a 4 by e but that's fine. The seat is still looks very nice with this white stitching on the leather. Looks very classy, I think. Matches the whole interior with the leather on the steering wheel. Something you might be disappointed about, no Wrangler, no matter how much you spend, will come with power seats. Uh, I think it's a combination of a cost-cutting measure and this interior is fully waterproof. So Jeep wants to keep stuff like switches right here would be harder to keep waterproof. This is simple, gets the job done, it's lighter. Most off-road enthusiasts probably would prefer this. Anyway, let me jump inside now. So inside the Jeep 4xe, wow, <laughs> lots, to, lots to talk about in here. I'm gonna start it up right away. Foot on the brake and start it. Now, of course, because this, I believe, is almost has a dead battery, it won't go that long in electricity at 1%. However, the engine is not running. We're in full electric mode right now. I can drive off in electric and at low speeds, I could probably creep along a few minutes like this. You got your tachometer, got your normal gauges. It looks pretty normal actually in here until you see over here, you got a range meter. There's your battery charge. And then over here, that's your fuel gauge. I want you guys to notice we've gone 169 miles in this vehicle and we've only gone a quarter tank of fuel. That's pretty darn impressive for a Jeep Wrangler. Uh, our commute is about 50 miles a day. So half of it is gas free. It's a beautiful feeling, especially with gas ticking up over $3. Over here, it's a little weird. You got a charge and a power meter. It's almost like a tachometer for electric vehicles. If you are braking or slowing down, the regenerative braking actually charges the vehicle and you will see the needle move down. If you accelerate, you'll see it move up almost like a tack and it shows how much power you're using out of the electric motor. How much power does this thing have, speaking of electric motor? This has 375 combined horsepower with a zero to 60 of right around six seconds. Uh, some people have seen to get a little faster than that even. It's very quick. Uh, wasn't too long ago that something like this would smoke uh, GTI, uh, you know, hot hatchbacks, even, you know, your V6 muscle cars, stuff like that. This will hang with the best of those if you're into drag racing your Jeep at a red light next with the car next to you. Over here, some how you can tell it's a four by E. There's three modes. You got hybrid mode, which the car does all the work and thinking for you. It just puts the power where it believes it should go. Electric mode, it will stay in electric as long as possible. Now, if the battery is dead, as you guys can see, electric mode temporary unavailable due to battery level. You won't be able to really use that. And then this is a really cool mode, e-save. So let's say you're driving to the trail and you want to off-road an electric. 
you click e-save and the car will not use its electric battery at all it will just use the gas motor so that when you get to your destination you can use the battery only that's very cool too on our commute we are finding we only use the electric for the city portion of the driving we turn on e-save on the highway use the gas motor on the highway and then when we get back into the city we put it back in electric where it's most efficient so that way you're using that gas engine in its most efficient area and the electric motor in its most efficient area because remember electric vehicles do better in the city than versus on the highway going over here the only other electric button is right here this is how you turn on your max regen button this almost makes this vehicle a one pedal driving experience if you let off the gas with this enabled it significantly slows down the vehicle oh, you barely need to touch the gas uh, it's taking my girlfriend a little while to get used to, but I think we're getting used to it. But if you don't like it, you can turn that off and then it breaks and stops just like a normal car. Using this mode though, it's pretty easy to get an extra one to two miles of range in between charges. Uh, it really adds up over the months and years that you'll have this vehicle. This button will probably add several charges to your battery overall. So this vehicle does come well equipped. However, we added a few option packages. The cold weather package, 995, gives you the heated seats and the heated steering wheel with the remote start. That's very nice. We do have the tow package, which also includes these awesome auxiliary switches. If you want to get things like a light bar or a winch, this is already pre-wired and you can wire it right into these switches. No need to go aftermarket for that. I think that's very, very cool. This is a Jeep, has a full transfer case, too high for auto. The auto acts like just an all wheel drive system, sends power wherever it's needed. You got your four time, part time. If you just are in this, want to get out of some stuck snow, you can throw it in there quick. You got your neutral, you can flat tow this behind an RV. Then you got your four low. That's very important. That's what makes it such a good off-road vehicle is the low range gearing. I love the shifter. Has a little Jeep willies on it. Feels very manly, very aggressive. I like it. You do have a manual mode. Putting it in a manual mode actually did just fire up the gas engine. I don't know if you guys could hear that. It's now running. But and I like the red trigger. I think that's a nice touch. I'm gonna put it back in a park. Uh, right here, you do have your media. It's covered, because again, this interior is waterproof, so things are covered if possible. You just got your aux port. You got your USB-C and USB-A. Very great connectivity. You got your hill descent control right here. When I hit that button, it actually says to enter select speed into four-wheel drive low. So this does have a lot of off-road goodies, even though it's just a base off-road Wrangler. This is not the Rubicon. I am loving this touchscreen. I just I had to jump into this because this is very impressive. It's 8.4 inches. Um, if you know any Chrysler, FCA, Dodge products, uh, Stellantis, uh, this is their system that everyone's used forever. Uh, I really like it. Uh, you go into your apps, it's very intuitive. So for example, if I want my driver heated seat right here, you can just drag it around just like it's a tablet and you could put it right here, for example, and put it where media is. And now there it is. It's just like a tablet. It's very responsive. Uh, it, there's not much more you could ask for from a system like this. Uh, it's very crisp. You got your off-road pages. This does take a second to boot up. I wish it was a little faster in the year 2021. It's such a modern vehicle that I wish this would uh, boot up faster. But once it does, it shows you your off-road pages. Maybe lost, never stuck, shows the Jeep driving up. I think it's very cool. It's so cool. This is awesome. It shows your transfer case, what's currently going on. It, this, you can hit your uh, accessory gauges, coolant temp, oil temp, battery volt, oil pressure, trans temp. It shows your coordinates, your altitude. You can go into your pitch and roll. And this shows the pitch. My driveway is at a slight angle, so you can see we're at a five degree pitch. It'll show your roll. It's just so incredibly cool. Um, that's what makes these Jeeps cool is there's, there's some uniqueness to them. Uh, if you want an SUV, but you don't want these swoopy crossovers that everyone seems to be driving, this seems to be the real good way to do it. Something unique about this vehicle, because it's electric, you do see the hybrid electric pages. In here, it actually shows where the power is going when. So we're not driving right now, but if I started driving, it would show where the power is coming from, where it's going, and in kilowatt hours, what's being used. Even if you turn on the climate control, it'll show you, I don't know if the heated seat will trigger it, but if you turn on the air conditioning or something, it'll show what type of power you're drawing from the battery, which I think is very cool. You can go into things like driving history, which shows exactly your battery usage and engine. As you can see, we're using the battery significantly every day. That's all free energy, essentially. Uh, my local area chart costs about 20 cents to charge this vehicle. Uh, then you can do charging schedule. What that means is you can actually plug this in, but if you don't want it to start charging till midnight when maybe your local utility rates are cheaper during off peak hours, you can schedule that. You can completely schedule when and where you want to, or when to charge. So you can plug it in, walk away, and it'll start charging on its own during off peak hours to make charging even cheaper. If you go into e-save mode, this is where you can do the battery save. 
Or you can do e-save and actually use the engine to charge the battery. Now that will use more gasoline, but if you really need to get somewhere and for some reason you really want that battery charged up when you get there, you can do battery charge from right here and at the sacrifice of miles per gallon, you'll charge up your battery. Uh, some people might really like that because this does off-road well in full electric mode. The electric uh, motor with the instant torque is really good for rock crawling. You don't need to rev up and down or go through gears. Uh, even though this is an eight-speed transmission, when you have all that low-end torque, there's no shifting required really. So uh, this vehicle is great to off-road with in uh, electric mode. Now just jumping over to more interior. Uh, the Sahara, this is a completely lined dash, a leather lined dash with the, uh, white stitching. I think it's very nice. I think it's a very cool touch. Uh, the glove box is very small. It surprised me quite a lot, honestly, how small this uh, glove box is, but it is nice. It gives you this nice case to hold your manual in. It gets the job done. Something to complain about, the transmission and all the off-road hardware does eat into passenger footroom a little bit. That's not to say it's super cramped, but it's not as roomy as uh, your Honda CRV, your you know Toyota RAV4. Uh, this isn't quite as roomy as those. Uh, right here, though, this does have a very nice deep center console, which is nice. Uh, with more, of course, connectivity, you got more USB ports in there. And this is very cool. Let me show you guys. This is the Jeep Toolkit, Jeep branded. Has a booklet to show you how to remove everything, and it comes with your tools right here, your ratchet. And everything your socket i think that's just so cool that a vehicle comes with a toolkit to remove the roof uh other than the new ford bronco which good luck in one of those uh this is the only vehicle on the market to offer that so what about this roof uh this roof does come off i will say on the highway this is a little noisy uh, i can't imagine how loud it would be when the rubicon with those bigger tires but it is a little noisy in here um definitely go with the hard top if you do commute on the highway because it is quieter and if you are a person who wants a luxurious, serene, quiet commute every day and you drive all the day on the highway, this might not be the best vehicle because it does get loud in here. I don't think it's unbearably loud, but it's definitely loud enough where, you know, some people might get bothered by it. I personally don't. I think it's fine. Uh, it's no louder than SUVs were for 15 years ago. And now you got that in a Wrangler. This roof, let me show you how to take it off. It's pretty simple. You got your four latches right here right there right there and this is easy this is a one person job this roof uh weighs about probably 20 pounds and i'll show you guys it's really not that hard to take off i'm gonna take it off right and just like that with magic the roof has come off now, i didn't remove the back portion because that is a little more involved not gonna lie that takes probably two people and it does take 15 minutes probably your first couple times but this is good enough for most people while you're driving it's right in your peripheral headroom. It's like you're driving a convertible. It is the coolest thing. Uh, this is why you get this vehicle. Take top off on a hot, nice summer day, and man, it's awesome. If you caught in the rain, you know you don't have to worry because your interior is waterproof. As I said before, it's just, that's why this thick bezel's here. That's why the, they try not to put power where they don't have to, like the seats. That's why everything has a cover on it, because you could take this off-roading and hose down your Wrangler. Don't know who's going to do that in their $55,000 Wrangler, but you could if you wanted to. So if you caught in the rain, it's not really that big of a deal. Let me step outside, guys. I'm going to give you an overview as to why this is one of the best, cheapest vehicles you can actually buy on the market. Let me step outside and show you guys. So the price asking out is a $55,000 Wrangler equal one of the cheapest vehicles on the market. Let me tell you guys how this is working for us. So this is $55,000. We ordered one and the dealer took off $2,000. Puts this vehicle priced at about 53. There is a $7,500 federal tax credit. If you lease this vehicle, you get that immediately. So you can lease it and buy it, or you can just wait till tax time and get your $7,500 back. That's pretty awesome. That means the effective cost of this vehicle as it sits is $46,500. But there's more to it than that. Now, if you factor in that, this is gonna save us roughly a thousand a year in fuel. If we keep this vehicle for 10 years over another random SUV, pick and choose whatever SUV you want, this has the potential to save you $10,000 or more if you could just drive almost an electric if over the course of 10 years. So now you've saved 10 grand in fuel over the next 10 years and Wranglers hold their value so incredibly well. 
Uh, I say that because if you go and shop these, you don't need to take my word for it. Wranglers hold at least 50% of their value after seven, eight, nine years. Uh, I've shopped these. Uh, we were looking possibly to used one. It made no sense. A new one is only a few thousand dollars more. So you buy this vehicle. After the tax credit, it's 46000 After 10 years of fuel savings, you save 10000 And then in 10 years, when you go to resell this vehicle, you'll still be able to sell for $20,000, which means it effectively costs you Ten grand, fifteen grand, twenty grand tops over ten years to own something as cool as this. If you go buy a Honda CRV for, you know, thirty grand, pick your price. In ten years, when it has one hundred twenty thousand miles on it, you might get what fifteen grand for it, and that vehicle actually costs you the same, if not maybe a little more because of the fuel, than this vehicle would have. So, to those wondering, you know, oh yeah, it's real expensive. It is, the upfront cost is very expensive. But if you look at total owner cost of ownership over a decade, it's a very, very affordable vehicle. Uh, if you can afford the upfront cost, of course, that's the big caveat. One more thing, some people talk about reliability. They worry, hey, it's an electric car. There's a lot more to go wrong. What's, what could that end up costing? And I will say Jeep, uh, Chrysler does offer a 10 year, 100,000 mile warranty on any of the electronic components under there. That'd be the batteries, the electric motor, the clutch for the transmission where it connects it. For 10 years, it's covered. So you don't have to worry about reliability on the electric part at least for at least a decade or 100,000 miles, which is very nice as well. Because then that means you have a lot of peace of mind. Uh, every The rest of the warranty is traditional, five years, 60,000 powertrain, three years, 36,000 bumper to bumper. And yeah, so we traded in our Volkswagen Crossport for this. And over 10 years of ownership, uh, this vehicle is going to cost us tens of thousands less when you factor in how much we were spending on fuel and depreciation costs and what we'll be able to resell it for. And I'm not going to lie, guys. This is just a pretty badass vehicle. There's no way around it. 375 horsepower, 0 to 60 in under 6 seconds. Uh, we're going to average over 50 miles per gallon. If you just take the average of how much we're driving with the fuel we're putting in, it doesn't get much better than this. If you guys have any questions, please leave a comment down below. I'll answer anything I, I can. I've had it arguably only a few days, so I'll do the best to answer what I can. Please leave a like. It really helps the channel. And if you want to see more content, please give me a comment. If you want to see more on this, we're thinking of taking it on an off-road trip, probably in the fall or maybe spring, still a little ways away, but we're going to see, try to tackle an amateur trail and see what this puppy can do. Thanks guys. Catch you in the next one. Peace.